In this tutorial, we're gonna be creating this procedural cobblestone material in Blender. And what's really cool about this material is you can change how random you want the cobblestone to be. So after we create the material, you'll be able to take this Voronoi texture and you can change this random value right here. So if you turn this random value all the way up to one, you can see it looks much more random and organic. But then if you turn the randomness value all the way down, it looks much more straight and more man-made. Now, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, Channel and purchase the procedural material, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And also, real quick before we start, this video was brought to you by my Blender procedural material packs. So I create material packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. So if you like using procedural materials in your artwork, then definitely check out these procedural material packs. And purchasing the packs is a really great way to help support this YouTube channel. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my Blender procedural materials, then you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. All the links are in the description. All right, so let me real quick just show you the setup that I have in the 3D space. So I just added an icosphere, and then when you add the icosphere, you can use the add icosphere settings to subdivide it, and then I shaded it smooth. And then I also added in this plane right here, and I also subdivided this as well. And why I subdivided these objects is because I'm going to be using the displacement in the node editor and then I'm also going to be using the adaptive displacement. Now you totally don't have to use the displacement if you don't want to but the displacement is going to actually pop the cobblestone out of the object so it does look pretty cool and it will make it more realistic but you don't have to use it if you don't want to and you can also do this tutorial in Eevee. It is a little bit laggy though in the viewport and also in the Eevee render engine you're not able to use the displacements so I will be using the cycles render engine because it looks a bit more realistic and you can use the displacements but you could could totally use Eevee if you'd like to. Now for the lighting, I just added in these two objects right here, and then I just added an emission material, and I set the strength to 40, and I added a slightly blue color. And then also to help me get very realistic lighting, I added in this Gamrig 1K HDR, and this is from polyhaven.com, so I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using to get some very realistic lighting. So I just added the HDRI into the world right here, and then I set the strength up to a 1.5. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial, so if you don't have that turned on, you can just click on Edit and then open up the Preferences. And then just click over here on the add-ons, and on the search here, you can start to type in Node, and then just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So the add-on is built into Blender, and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So I'm just going to select this object, and then I'm going to click on New, and I can just call this uh, Cobblestone. And then I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to drop this material on this object as well. Now let's go over the settings for the displacement. So if you want to use the displacement, you're going to need to set the render engine to cycles because the displacements in the node editor doesn't work in Eevee, it only works in cycles. And then also, if you want to use the adaptive displacement, you'll need to set this to experimental. Now, you don't have to use the adaptive displacement, but I will be using the adaptive displacement. And then also, if you click right over here on the material properties and go to your cobblestone material, right down here under settings, the displacement here, I want to change this to displacement and bump, and that way we're telling the material to use the displacement. And then the last thing, Thing is if you want to use the adaptive displacement you can click right over here on the modifier properties and then you can click on add modifier and you can add the subdivision surface modifier and then right here you can just turn on the adaptive subdivision and what this is going to do is it's going to add more detail closer up where you can see the object but then farther away it will add less detail and then I'm going to click on this object as well and I'm also going to add the subdivision surface and turn on the adaptive subdivision and then because this is a subdivision surface modifier it's smooth out the edges so I'm going to change this Catmull Clark to simple. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to start by searching for a Voronoi texture and I'm going to drop it down here and then just select this Voronoi and you can press Control T that's using the feature from the node wrangler and it's going to add the mapping and texture coordinate. Now I'm going to plug the object up to the vector and then we don't need the mapping node so I'm going to select it and press X to delete it. So using the other feature from the node wrangler I can Control shift and click on nodes and that will preview the node. Now this F1 here on the Voronoi, I'm going to change it to distance to edge. So you can see when I turn this down, it's going to be very uniform and straight, but then when I turn the randomness value up, it's going to be very random. So I'm just going to change this to 0.4 for now, but we could play around with this later if you want to. And then I'm also going to turn this scale here to a 1.5, so it's a bit bigger. So now I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a noise texture, and I'll drop the noise texture right down here, and then I want to plug the object into 
the vector. And then I can control shift and click on it to preview it. So I'm going to turn the scale to two, and then I'm going to turn the detail up to five. So it has more detail. So now we have this noise here and we also have the Voronoi. So I want to mix these two together. So I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a mix RGB and I'll just drop the mix RGB right here. So I want to plug the Voronoi texture into color two. And then I actually want to plug the noise texture into the factor. So I'm actually going to plug the color value into the factor. And then I don't want it to be set to mix. So I'm going to change this to darken. And then this color one, I'm going to turn it up a bit. So it's much brighter, not fully bright, but pretty bright. Now you can see that it is pretty gray and it's not very contrasty. So I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and just drop the color ramp right down here. And then I'm just going to box select these nodes and kind of move them over. So I have a bit more space. So I'm now going to click on this tab and I'm going to drag out and then I can click on this white tab and drag out as well. And now you can really start to see this better because it's more contrasty. So all these white pieces in here are going to be the cobblestone pieces. All right, so that is it for our mask. So now what I want to do is I want to create a stone material and then also a dirt material, and then we will combine them together. So I'm going to click on the principle and just kind of drag it up here. And I'm first going to start by creating a stone material. So I'm going to press shift a, and I'm actually going to search for a frame and I'm going to add the frame right here. And then I can click on the principle and just drop it in here. So the frame is just a really great way to organize our nodes. Now, when I select the frame, I can press N and N is going to open up this panel right here. And on the label here, I can just rename this to stone. And then I can press N to close that panel. And you can see now it says stone. So to create the stone material, I'm going to press shift A, and I'm going to start by adding a noise texture and we'll just drop it inside that frame. And then we can kind of pull it over. And then with the noise texture selected, I'm going to press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and it added it way down here. So I just need to press G to grab, and I'm just going to drop these both in the frame. And then the mapping, we don't need this. So I'm going to press X to delete it. And I want to plug the object up to the vector so that we can use the object coordinates. And then I can control shift and click on this to preview the noise texture. So I'll turn this detail right here all the way up to 16. So it's very detailed. And then I can plug the factor into the base color on the principled. And then I can just control shift and click on the principle. And then let's also press B for the box select. And I'm just going to drag and box select these nodes. And then I'll press G to grab and I'm just going to move them over a little bit. So now what I want to do is I want to take this mask here and I want it to contribute to the color of the stone material. So I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a mix RGB and I'll drop the mix RGB right here in the stone material. I can now take this color ramp right here and I'm going to plug the color into color two, and then I can control shift and click on this to preview it. And then I want to change it from mix to multiply instead. Now this doesn't really look like a stone material yet because it's just kind of white and black. So I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a color ramp node. Let's just drop the color ramp node right in here. And now we can change the colors to change the color of the stone. So I can just control shift and click on the color ramp and then we can change the colors. So I'm first going to click on the white tab and I'm going to drag it over a bit. So there's a bit more of that white. And then I'm actually going to change it to a gray color. So I'm going to turn down the brightness quite a bit and I will just drag it down to something like this. So you can see it's now a much darker gray. And then I'm going to hold down the control key and click right here. And that is going to add a new tab. And then I'm going to make this one a gray color, but it'll be a little bit brighter. And then I'm also going to drag it just slightly over here so that it's just very slightly brown. So you can see now that just is very, very slightly brown. And that looks a lot more like a stone color. And then I can control shift and click on the principal to preview it. Now it's very smooth right now and stone is usually pretty rough. So I'm going to take the factor right here on the noise texture and plug that into the bump to give it some bump. And then I need to press shift a and I'm going to search for a bump node. Let's just click on the bump node and I'm going to drop it right in here. So I want to plug the factor into the height and then that is going to convert this to normal data. Now it is very strong right now. You can see it's very, very strong. So I'm going to turn the strength down to like a 0.2. So it's less strong and that is looking much better. Now I am also going to change the roughness down a little bit. I'm going to change it down to a 0.4 and that way it's a bit more shiny, but you could also turn the roughness up if you don't want it to be quite as shiny. But I think the rock does look kind of nice if it's just a little bit shiny. 
so I'll turn the roughness to 0.4. Now I also want this mask right here to be contributing to the bump. So I'm going to take this bump and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and drop it right here. And then I can take this color and I'm going to plug it up to the height value. And then I want this bump to be going into the normal. So this way we can add two bump maps together. So I can just control Shift and click on this. And now you can start to see that bumpiness coming through, but it's not very strong right now. So on this bump right here, I'll turn the strength up to one. And now that is really starting to look much more like cobblestone. All right. So that is it for our stone material. So I'm now going to create the dirt material down here and then we'll plug them both together. So I'll press shift a and I'm going to search for a principled BSDF and I can just drop it right down here. And then I want to press shift a and I also want to search for a frame. This is of course totally optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but I'm going to just put the principled BSDF into the frame and then I can click on the frame and press N to open up the side panel and I can just rename this to dirt. So it's just a very nice way to organize your nodes. So I'm now going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another noise texture. Let's put that into the dirt frame and just bring it over here. And then again, let's click on the noise texture and press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and we can add it into the dirt. And then again, I don't really need the mapping node. So I'm going to press X to delete it and I can take the object and plug that into the vector. So I'm going to leave the scale at five and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to 16. So it's very detailed. And then I can take the color and put that into the base color of the principle and I can control shift and click on the principle to preview it. Now it doesn't really look like dirt right now. So I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right in here. And then we can play around with the colors and that'll change the color of our dirt. So I'm going to click on this black tab right here and I'm going to change this to a dark brown color. So something like this kind of a dark brown. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of two, eight, one, nine, one zero. And then I'm going to click on the white tab right here and I'm going to make this a brown color, but this one is going to be much lighter. And if you'd like to use the same exact hex value that I'm using, you can again, click over on the hex and you can type in five, five, four, four, three, six. And then just like our other material, I want to take the factor and plug that into the normal just to give it a little bit of bump. And then I need to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a bump node and just plug that in here. And then we want to plug the factor into the height and that'll convert it to normal data. And then it is pretty strong right now. And that's kind of too strong. So I'm going to turn this strength value to a 0.25. So it's less strong. And then again, I want to click on the bump and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and drop it right over here. And I want to plug this into the bump as well. So I'm going to take this mask here, this color ramp, and I can plug the color into the height. And then I can turn the strength all the way up to one again. And then I want to add these both together so I can take this normal and plug it into the normal. So if I control shift and click on that, you can see here's the bump. And then I can control shift and click on this. And you can see now it's adding both of those bumps together. Um, so I can control shift and click on the principle to preview that dirt material. So this is looking pretty cool, but I want to add a little bit of moss into that dirt material. So to create the moss, I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and let's drop the color ramp node into the dirt material. And I'm just going to drag it up here. So I can now actually take this noise texture and I'm going to plug the factor and plug that into the factor of the color ramp. And then I can control shift and click on this color ramp to preview it. So I'm going to drag the black tab out quite a bit. And then I will also drag the white tab out just like that. So I just want the moss to be in a few little places just like that. So now we can just mix this together with the color. So I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a mix RGB again, and we'll just drop this right here. So I can now take this color and I'm going to plug that into the factor. And then I want this color ramp here from the dirt. And I want that to go into color one. So I can now control shift and click on it to preview it. So color two, that is going to be the color of the moss. So I'm going to change it to kind of a brownish greenish color. And the exact color that I'm going to be using for this moss is a hex value of four, seven, six, two, one, one. So just kind of a desaturated brownish, dark greenish color. And then there's just one more thing that I want to do. I want the moss to be kind of bumping out a little bit. So I'm going to take this bump node and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And I'll just drop it right down here in front of the other bumps. So the normal can just go through the normal. So now we have this extra height value to add data into. So I can take this color ramp right here and I can take the color and plug that into the height value. And then if I control shift and click on this, I want to turn the strength all the way up to one. So 
I can now control shift and click on the principle and we can check that out. So you can see now there's little bits of moss and by adding this bump here, it's making the moss look like it's bumping out. All right, so now we have our stone and we also have our dirt. So I want to just mix them together. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a mix shader. Let's just drop the mix shader right here. And then I can just take this principle and put that up to the shader and then this one can go to the other shader. So this factor right here is just gonna blend between the dirt and the stone, but I want to tell it where I want to be stone and where I want it to be dirt. So we're gonna take this color right here, we're gonna take this mask that we created, and I'm gonna plug it all the way over here and plug that into the factor of the mix shader. Now you can see that right now it's kind of doing the opposite of what we want. It's making the parts that are bumping out the dirt. So to fix this, I'm just gonna plug the stone material down onto the bottom shader, and then this dirt material is gonna to go to the top one. And now that looks correct, so the stone is the gray, and then in between it, there's dirt. All right, so that is looking really cool, but we still haven't used the displacement. So to use the displacement, I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for the displacement node, and I'm just gonna drop it down here, and then I can plug the displacement up to the displacement right here. So I can now take this color from the color ramp, and I can plug it up to the height value on the displacement. And then I wanna turn the mid-level to zero, because we don't want any of that. And then I'm gonna turn the scale way down to a 0.1, so it's much less strong. And there we go. So now if I look around here, you can see that the cobblestone is actually popping out of the mesh. Now, if you don't want to use the displacement, you don't have to. You can see that if, if I unplug this, it does actually look pretty cool, but I do like using the displacement. It just makes it a bit more realistic, and I do really like those cobblestone pieces popping out. And then right back over here, as I talked about at the beginning of the tutorial, you can play around with this random value, and it's going to change how straight the cobblestone is. So if you want the cobblestone to look like it's more straight, then you can turn the randomness down, or if you want it to look much more organic and random, you can turn this randomness value up. And then also you can play around with this color ramp right here. So if you drag the white tab out right over here, you can see that now you're able to see more of the stone. Or if you kind of drag this back and drag the black tab out, you're able to see less of that stone material. And there is the finished rendered material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can purchase the project files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And also purchasing my Blender procedural material packs is a really great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.